All right, uh, we're running a little behind here, so let's move on to our uh, next topic, and we're slowly shifting into a conversation about the playoff races, but this is a debate I saw over the weekend, and I'm interested in your take on it. The Minnesota Wild, they're second in the Western Conference. If you were to put their point total in the East, they would be tied for seventh in the conference. That is just crazy to me. Even if by points percentage, they'd be tied with the Bruins for sixth in the conference, and they're second in the West. So the question is, Frank, is the East that much better or is the West just that much deeper? You know, I've been bouncing this around in my head since you asked me this morning, and I'm going to say that I think the East is that much better. You know, I think when you take a look at the Colorado Avalanche, you know, they're arguably the best team in the league. And a lot of these other teams in the West, Minnesota, Calgary, and St. Louis, they're kind of on par with you know, that next rung down in the Eastern Conference that would include Carolina, Tampa, the Rangers, Boston, and Carolina, and Pitt. But I think where the East has a significant advantage is I think if you were to put a lot of those teams head-to-head, -head, especially against the bottom half of the Western Conference playoff bracket, there's a pretty sizable advantage. I think a lot of those teams in the East would dominate the bottom half of the West bracket, clear-cut series favorites that – you know, I think lend itself to answering the question that the East is so much better this year. You know, you look at that Atlantic division bracket and what it's going to look like, it's, it's murderer's row. Like trying to get out of that side of the bracket, not to say that the Metro is a cakewalk by any means, but when you've got any one of those teams that could be losing Tampa, Toronto, even Boston in the first round, and, and you're guaranteeing that basically – three of those four teams are going to be eliminated in the first two rounds. Like that's a banana sandwich to think about. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy with how good those teams are that no one's going to be going on a deep run except for one team from that group. Yeah. I, the, I get the East, like it probably is a little bit better, but I also think the West is a little bit deeper. And my reasoning for saying that is look at, so the eight teams that are in the playoffs, great. Those are good teams on either side of it. But look at the teams that are outside of the playoff picture in both conferences. How many of those teams in the East would you say are average or better? You could maybe say the, you could probably say the Islanders, and then you could maybe say Columbus just because they have that 500 points percentage. So there's maybe a case for them. In the West, I think you could look at the teams that are outside of the playoff picture and say Vegas is above average, Winnipeg, Vancouver, since the coaching change certainly is as well. And at least earlier in the season, they've been dreadful as of late. But Anaheim was in that mix as well. So I think the reason maybe some of the higher teams have a lower points percentage is just because it's maybe tougher on a night-to-night -night basis to steal points off the non-playoff teams. You're shaking your head. You think I'm, you think it's a stretch? Yeah, that's, that's not an argument I'm buying because I'm looking at it and I'm seeing those teams that are now down towards the bottom and especially with how they've played of late, the Ducks, the Kraken, the Coyotes, like their bottom part of their standings are, is just as weak, just as many points you can pile up as some of the teams in the East. It, I don't know that the, the whole deeper argument holds weight or makes sense. So you're saying the mushy middle in the West is just exactly that, nothing but mush. Well, Fair enough. I mean, we went into the season talking about the Pacific Division being the easiest division in hockey, and like, look at the numbers. They don't lie to this point. The Oilers haven't set the world on fire for any prolonged stretch. You know, to start the season, they were good. They've been good of late. They had this huge chunk in the middle where they were the 31st or 32nd ranked team in the league and didn't really affect their playoff chances at the end of the day.